Hello everyone and welcome. This is a follow-up to some of our most popular videos. Previously, we have covered the top 10 worst things Zelda, Link, and Ganondorf have all done, and even a best things Ganondorf has done. As a thank you for all of the great comments on those videos, I decided to make a new video only focusing on Zelda from Breath of the Wild. If you can think of any that I leave off, or would like to see a similar video on a different character or video game, please comment below and I will give you a shout out and credit when I make the video. If you enjoy videos like this, it would mean a lot if you could click the subscribe button and leave a like. Thank you. 1. Not opening up to Link For someone who is meant to have the Triforce of Wisdom, a lot of things she does isn't very wise. Throughout the cutscenes of Breath of the Wild, we see Zelda always arguing with Link, and other people for that matter and being overly rude to him. This seemingly doesn't change until Link saves her from an attack. I think aside from Skyward Sword, this pairing of Link and Zelda are the two that most fans feel the relationship is hinting at something more than friendship being possible. It is also hinted that her feelings for Link is what finally allows her to unlock her powers and seal Ganon, with Mithfa's lines to her being a nod to this. 2. Keeping the champions with her this one was mentioned by a great friend of the channel, Natsu. When Ganon returns, Link, Zelda, and the rest of the champions are on their way back from the Spring of Wisdom. Link is Zelda's personal bodyguard. It makes sense for him to be accompanying her, possibly even a few other guards or Sheikah members as well, if they feel it is needed, as we see them accompany her in other cutscenes. However, with everyone knowing Ganon will be reviving very soon, the champions shouldn't be so far away from their divine beasts, and should likely be training to pilot them as much as possible. Nintendo provided a great and very detailed explanation within creating a champion on exactly what all happens after Ganon returns, which the game doesn't show us. One of the pages includes this map showing exactly how far everyone has to travel when caught by surprise. If the champions would have been nearby their divine beasts, and with more training, they may have been able to all attack Ganon shortly if not almost immediately, and slow him down until Zelda and Link could stop him. If they weren't so far away, traveling across all of Hyrule in such a rush, they may have been able to stop the Blights as well, and not allowing them to take over the divine beasts, and not die in battle, which allowed the Blights to take over the divine beasts. 3. Traveling Alone Throughout the cutscenes, we see Zelda has a very stubborn attitude and wants to solve and do everything on her own, with little to no help. Knowing Link is meant to be her personal bodyguard, the best swordsman in all of Hyrule, it would be easy for him to do this. We see Zelda alone in different scenes, and it is the very reason that she is ambushed, running away from enemies before being knocked down, and I presume almost killed before Link steps in, barely just in time. If Zelda just would have had her guards with her, or Link, this wouldn't have happened. She wouldn't have been a second away from dooming all of Hyrule, because of something so avoidable. 4. Prioritizing the Guardians Zelda is seen many times believing the best way to win is by using the Guardians and Divine Beasts to protect Hyrule and stop Ganon, instead of relying on her own powers. However, this all ends up backfiring and doing the exact opposite. When Ganon breaks free, he uses his malice to take over all of the Guardians and Divine Beasts, and this ends up being the exact reason Link dies. 5. Arguing with her dad In an important scene, we see King Rome arguing with Zelda to not focus so much on trying to understand the ancient tech, instead explaining she needed to use that time to unlock her own power. Instead of listening, Zelda believes she is correct and keeps splitting her time between the Sheikah tech and her own power, when she could have used the extra time to travel to all of these springs in order to unlock her own power sooner, which would have given everyone a way better chance on stopping Ganon. 6. The Master Sword in the scene where Link dies, Zelda has Link taken to the Shrine of Resurrection and decides to take the Master Sword to its pedestal in Korok Forest and have the Great Deku Tree watch over it. This is actually a great idea. The problem is, Link dies while they are on their way to stop Ganon. Zelda then takes even longer traveling around the castle to Korok Forest. The champions have already rushed to their divine beasts, where they end up losing and passing away. With Zelda being the one to seal Ganon, 
If she would have simply had a guard or a Sheikah member to take the sword to the Deku Tree, just as she did with Link, she may have been able to make it directly to the castle with enough time to seal Ganon in the same way, but before the champions died giving us a slightly similar story, but with the champions still alive. 7. Terrorizing Daruk This is just a simple fun one. While not completely Zelda's fault, when the dog runs up to Zelda, she begins petting it. When it barks, Daruk jumps back and shields himself, shaking in fear. Zelda notices this and doesn't bother trying to comfort Daruk or move the dog away. Instead, it barks again, scaring him even more. Then, after Daruk explains himself, Zelda laughs at him. 8. The Sheikah Slate In this cutscene, Zelda is once again off on her own. She states out loud she already thought the shrines can only be opened by the chosen hero, and she wouldn't be able to do it. Yet, she doesn't bother having Link, the chosen hero, come with her, which he is already supposed to be doing. After she sneaks away, Link shows up, and instead of exploring the shrine with him, since they should now be able to open it, which she was trying to do, she argues, and they leave. This implies Zelda somewhat should know she shouldn't be using the Sheikah Slate, but should have given it to Link, as she stated it would only work with the chosen hero. Alternatively, she could leave the Sheikah Slate with those at the tech lab to learn even more about it, while she focuses on unlocking her powers. 9 learning of her mother. It is stated that Zelda's mother and entire bloodline have the power of the goddess running through them. Zelda seems to always be getting frustrated and stressed over messing up, instead of going to someone who would have known her mother, grandmother, or someone else who had unlocked their power. Each Zelda is supposed to have their own Sheikah, in many cases Impa, that acts as an assistant or caretaker. Some of the other races also live for very long lifespans. Zelda could have easily found someone who was close with her mother or a previous Princess Zelda and asked them for advice on how her mother unlocked her power instead of giving up as we see her do in frustration. 10. Forgetting Egg This is another fun idea. Egg, or Tarako, is probably the greatest Zelda character ever as well as Zelda's childhood best friend. So it is absolutely horrible she was able to completely forget almost everything about him for so long. Besides, I think we could all use a time-traveling robot egg. If you have any questions you would like for us to answer, or news and topics you would like us to discuss in a video or our podcast, you can leave them below in the comments, and we will get to as many as we can. And if you are a Patreon supporter, we will guarantee that your answer is moved to the top of the list to be answered or discussed first on our podcast, which happens every Thursday at 9.30 Eastern or 6.30 Pacific. Thank you to Riker1, Tremel Shefford, someone whose name is only donated to hear Jesse speak my name and then didn't give me his name, Gene Pinna, Disappointment, Joseph Stewart, Zane Jawani, Sober X, Mr. Monocled Metroid, David Guthman, Zoe M, Natsu, Jesse Wood, Andremoy, Ashton, Justin Clark, Candy, Chad Costin, Blargnar, Monica Spath, Lovable Christy, and Gus Calvo. I apologize if I got some of your names wrong. Please comment below or you can message me directly to correct how I pronounced your name. Thank you all for your support, and I hope these videos keep entertaining everyone.